Hello YouTube. So in a geometry class or an algebra one class, you probably learned what the volume or rather the formula for the volume of a sphere is, which is V equals four thirds pi r cubed. And you may be wondering, what is this four thirds doing here? Like you could probably understand why pi would be there, but what is four thirds doing there? And why is it cubed and not squared? Well, this video, I'll be deriving it using calculus to figure out why this is. So let's start. So let's say we draw a circle centered about the origin of radius r. So this point is going to be r0. Point up here is going to be 0r. So now let's say we draw a line from the y-axis to a random point on the line um, such that it's perpendicular. The line is going to be perpendicular to the, to the line, to the axis. So right, right angle between this line and the y-axis. So now let, let this distance connecting the circle and the y-axis be x. And let that um, let the distance between this dot and this dot, so the cent origin and the point of intersection, be y. Now draw a um, draw draw a line between the origin and that point where we connected the circle and the, this line up here. That distance is going to be r, obviously. Okay, so now our trick is we're going to revolve this entire thing about the y-axis. So I'm just going to draw this here, which would signify that we're revolving about the y-axis. So then you'll notice that this line that we drew here, it's going to be revolved about the y-axis and it's going to form a circle. So pretend that this is a, real, uh, a circle albeit it's really badly drawn. So this is, this is our circle. So if you think about it, this, this circle is composed of an infinite amount of these lines that I drew, these perpendicular lines connecting the y-axis and the circle. Circles composed of an infinite amount of these. So when we revolve these lines about the y-axis, they're going to create circles. So the sphere that we generate from revolving this circle about the y-axis, well, the, that sphere is made of an infinite amount of these circles, these flat disk circle things. So what our approach to finding the volume of a sphere is we're going to add up all the different area or all the different volumes of these flat disks that we generated from revolving these lines about the y-axis. So let's do that. So what is the volume of a flat disk? Well, flat disk has the same volume as a cylinder. Hold on, bad marker. Okay, so that's going to be disk. Um, that's going to be pi r squared h. So the thing is, each of these each of these lines that we drew on the original on the original circle, they're gonna obviously have dy thickness because when you take an integral, you have like a function f of x dx where dx is the thickness or the, the thickness of the lines that we're drawing. So logically we can say that the thickness is gonna be dy. So that's gonna be the height, obviously, because when we have a disk, we have the base and then we have the height. So the base, which is pi r squared, so this is base. Well, each little disk, each disk, um, it's gonna be x, because I said that earlier, and because it's the distance between it's the distance between the y-axis or the axis of revolution and the circle. So that's obviously going to be the x-coordinate. So that's going to be pi x. Wait, why did I put that there? This is going to be, r is going to be x. 
because that's just the radius of our circle. So then the volume of our disk is going to end up being pi x squared dy. Okay, so now we know that the volume of a sphere is, is going to be all the little different volumes added up because that's that's what a sphere is. It's an infinite kind of kind of an infinite amount of these flat disks being added up into um, into one big sphere. So then our volume is going to be equal. The volume of our sphere is going to be equal to integral for, of dv, or basically this is basically saying the sum of all the dv's. So this, this is rather going to be dv here, since it's infinitesimal. We're summing up all the dv's from, now we need to find a coordinate. So we're summing it up really from negative r to r, since this is, and I'll tell you why I chose these coordinates later, or you, you can figure it out. So, um, so now we can substitute this pi x squared dy into the, our dv expression. So now we have pi x squared dy instead. And now it kind of becomes clear why I chose negative r to r, because we're integrating in terms of the y variable. Because And the thing is, we revolved it about the y-axis, so this whole thing's kind of centered about the y-axis. So that's why the y-axis matters. Now, we don't really know what to do with this x variable since we're not integrating in terms of the x variable, we're integrating in terms of the y variable. But there's this handy trick where, remember how we drew this triangle here, this right triangle? Well, this is the, since it's a right triangle, we could just use the Pythagorean theorem. Since this is the x coordinate, this is the y coordinate, this is the r coordinate, we know x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So. That means x squared is equal to r squared minus y squared. So we could just substitute that here. So now instead we have pi, I'll just bring the pi out for convenience. And now we just have r squared minus y squared dy. Keep in mind r is a constant, which we already have here, we de which we defined as the radius of this sphere or the circle. So. Now we can integrate in terms of y. So now we have pi times r squared y minus one third y cubed from negative r to r. So now we can plug in r and negative r, our upper bounds and our lower bounds. So this would be pi r cubed minus one third r cubed minus negative r cubed plus one third r cubed. That winds up being pi times four thirds r cubed or our final answer four thirds pi r cubed. So that's how we derive the volume of a sphere. Basically to summarize, we originally had a circle where we drew an infinite, in, infinite amount of these infinitesimally thin lines. And then we revolved each of those lines about the y-axis. So now we created an infinite, infinite amount of infinitesimally thin sort of disks. And then we added the volumes of each disk to find the volume of the overall sphere that we got from revolving a circle about the y-axis. Thank you for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next video.